Hey everyone, this is Alpaco and I wanted to talk about the Ricoh GR3X. Before I was a Olympus user, my primary camera for work was the Canon 5D Mark II, and my primary street photography camera was the Ricoh GR. The naming scheme confuses me a bit, but it was the first Ricoh with the APS-C sensor. It felt like the original film version, which I also used to have, and that's the only reason why I had the digital version. It had snap autofocus and tw uh, a 28mm f2.8 lens, which is something that came from the original models, original film models. I liked that camera because it was pocketable. I carried it around with me everywhere. I'm also clumsy and I dropped it a lot, so it survived being with me every day and that's not an easy feat. The only complaint I had about the camera was the focal length. It was a 28mm and that's really too wide for my liking. The film version also had a 28mm, so I understand why they kept that, but I'm not a fan of wide-angle lenses. I wanted a 35 or 40mm version, preferably 40mm, because that's my favorite focal length. Now, 8 years later, Ricoh decides to show up with a 40mm version of the Ricoh GR3. The timing couldn't be more perfect, because OMDS also announced a 20mm Pro lens, which is a 40 mil equivalent on Micro Four Thirds. I'm leaning towards waiting for that lens to be released, but the size of it is going to be a determining, determining factor for me. I like my cameras and lenses to be as small and manageable as possible. I am thinking of trying the 20 mil Mark II, the Panasonic 20 millimeter part Mark II, because I had three terrible copies of the Mark I version. This kind of brings up the, the subject of street photography cameras. I know it's never going to happen, but I really wish Olympus would consider doing a digital Olympus XA. For lack of a better naming scheme, let's just call it a XAD. That would be my dream street photography camera. Sure, there are available compact cameras like the Sony RX100 series and the Sony ZV-1, but it's not the same. I enjoyed using the Sony ZV-1, but that honeymoon stage is over and it's really just been sitting in my camera bag for a couple weeks now. As great of a camera as it is, it just doesn't jive with me. If you're a YouTuber looking for an all-around vlogging camera, that's the best camera for you. I don't vlog. I, I can't seem to walk and talk naturally, so this setup with my camera on the table and me talking to it is as far as that goes. What I do like to do, though, is photography. Good old-fashioned taking photos with a camera of different things that I find interesting or beautiful. Phone cameras are great at being that personal camera, and I do think that's a major contributor to why I haven't had a need for a proper personal photography camera, but there is that intimacy that, that's lost when using a phone. That personal intimacy that you get with your head, your gut, and your heart when when you've been a photographer for a long time, it's a large part of who you are and your identity. Your mind just works differently when you have a, a proper camera in your hand. At least for me it is. That's why I still have a personal need for a solid photography camera. I'm just not willing to spend over $500 for when I'm not willing to sacrifice personal conveniences. With that said, I would love for a completely stripped Olympus XAD. Zero video features, no flippy screen, no IBIS, same sensor as the EM1s and the EM5 Mark III, a 35 or 40mm lens, f1.8 or f2 if is all I'd really want, but faster if they can fit that in an ultra compact body, which I think they can. Uh, just as a little lens physics side note, because there's no mount, the rear element can sit much closer to the sensor and this enables more flexibility in lens designs. With completely stripped features, it could be priced competitively at around $300-$400, which is realistic since it won't have any major features. Keep the price down by using an older processor and sensor, use an optical viewfinder to keep it just like the original film version, and that'll keep the cost down as well. This all translates to an amazing battery life. Use the TG Tough chassis that they already have uh, to keep it, well, tough, and there are street photographers out there that go out in harsher conditions. That'll be a great addition for them. And since the Tough Series cameras are 
well into production that will keep costs very low as well. Those cameras already sell for under $450. If they produce it, even at a smaller production batch, the low cost will likely outsell the competing cameras in its niche market. It will strictly compete in that niche street photography, <laughs> street photography genre of cameras. Brand new costs would be half the price of those, of those competing cameras. The, the Fuji X100 series maintains a premium cost at over $1,000. And Fuji doesn't sell very many, many units of it. This is evident because they released a cheaper, smaller point-and-shoot called the XF10, which, by the way, is a blatant Riku, Rico ripoff. A ripoff that I'm very interested in trying out, actually, since the used prices fall between $250 and $450. Rigo, on the other hand, sold eight times more units of the GR3 last year compared to the Rico GR2. I can't say how much Fuji gained or lost in sales of the X100 series, but they gained a total of 0.9% increase last year, and that spread through all of their products. Rico, on the other hand, only has the GR3, the Theta 360, and the WG6. No model in their brand crosses each other. The Rico GR is more compact than the X1, X100 series, and I imagine that turns a lot of potential buyers off from the Fujis. This is the advantage of the Olympus and the smaller sensor size. You can theoretically make the smaller, make one smaller than the Rico GR with a faster lens. That's the beauty of the Micro Four Thirds sensor. It's larger than the inches class and smaller than the APS-C class, which is a sweet spot in my opinion. You just need to design around that advantage. This is the reason why I, why Olympus should make one. There's a niche market where you already have all the necessary parts to fill it, so it won't really cost very much to make. Will OMDS consider making this camera? They aren't, and they most likely won't, but I really want one. Do you have a dream camera that someone should make? What is that camera? Thanks for listening to me talk about a camera that will never be made. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.